So they argued that I only learned, you know, about the obscenities, about the pornography, about the allegations, all the stories that were on the cocktail party circuit. I only learned about this because I wouldn't accept, you know, being a, a, a good girl and, and, and instead I had gone and filed a suit. At this point in their argument, um, Judge Harold Vieter interrupted. And he said, well, here, you know, I just want to clarify something. Let me clarify what, you, what you're saying here. If a person is in a room and poison gas is pumped into that room and that person doesn't know about it but dies, then the person isn't harmed? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> The lawyer had this sick look on his face <laughs> and hesitated, but then he answered, yes, your honor. <laughs> I was fortunate to have a wise judge and a gifted attorney. I also discovered that I had supporters, and you know who you are, who risked retaliation and spoke up to demand justice for me. To counter the poison gas, they pumped oxygen into the room. From the bottom of my heart, I think. So many times, women are not recognized for the great and wonderful things that they do. And I feel that opportunities such as this provides a venue for all the great things that they have done to be showcased. Sometimes your circumstances do not define your abilities or your accomplishments that will be achieved if you just focus in on the positive things that are inside you and have a vision and strive for that vision, no matter what else is going on in your life. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight. So many times there are barriers, there are obstacles, there's politics, there's injustice, there's so many things that are there to block you or cause barriers to you achieving any particular type of, of goal or impact. But I've learned that I stand on the shoulders of a race of people who have been fighters. And so it's just, just part of my nature that you have to keep up the fight. Fanny and Gerald Edmonds are my parents. And from my mother and father, I learned so many things of the survival skills that I needed for life. I learned to love unconditionally. I learned to survive in areas sometimes where economics may not have been as fruitful, but yet still I survived. I learned how to be a woman of class and dignity I learned how to hammer a nail and do spackling in a house and cook. And I learned that education was something only you could get for yourself. But once you got it, no one could take it away. So I learned the foundation bricks upon which I have built my life. I think when you celebrate women's achievements, it really, I think, has an effect on the rest of the population, a kind of a role model effect that we call in, in research is that you know, women achieving things, women breaking barriers, uh, and I think we have a, a big diversity of inductees this year, and so I think what people see is women's accomplishments, I think it inspires people, especially I think college students and young women, to see what they can achieve. You know, one of the themes that kind of came through on notes that my students wrote me is that I was this example of a strong person, and my mom was a strong person, and she certainly didn't come from the same kind of background I did, didn't go to college, mainly a stay-at-home mom, but she was really strong. And so I think that when we um, emulate strength, 
to our young people. Uh, that is a good modeling experience for them, and I think that helps them be strong and independent, and that's certainly what my mom did for me, and I hope to do with my children, and I hope to do for my students at Iowa State. I think the fact that we established and I established the Archives of Women's Political Communication at Iowa State is a great resource for researchers. You know, you have to do a job talk when you come to Iowa State, and so that was my idea. It, it did, I did have this archives, and now it has over 2,000 speeches, all these political ads, and so it's being used by researchers throughout the world. Well, I think a lot of it is confidence, and so I think that's why we need to raise young women to be confident. But I also think, and one thing we don't talk a lot about, is that when you run for politics, stuff, you actually have to be a risk taker. You have to be willing and I think in business as well, you have to be willing to take a risk. And sometimes it comes with great rewards, but sometimes you um, don't win. And so I think one thing that's different between men and women is that men tend to be risk takers. And if they fail, they try again. And so that's one of the things that we try to do with our Ready to Run campaign school is give women the confidence to run, but also say, hey, if you run and you're defeated, um, run again. And we've seen that more and more. You know, Early on with Ready to Run, we'd see women run, and then if they lost, we're not going to run again. But what we're now seeing is that the women who ran after our t 2017 campaign school are, you know, are running. They, they re went in 2015, and now they're running again in 2017. So I think we need to instill women taking risks. And that's something that's not just in politics. I think that's also on the business side. Well, I think for me in particular, having female role models was uh, critical at each step uh, that I pursued in my career. I had female role models, of course I had my mom and my um, female role models at Iowa Wesleyan University. So, and then when I went on to uh, join NASA, I had female role models there. I, in part, I chose to become an astronaut because they selected females uh, the first year they selected was when I was um, graduating from high school. And so all of those things, I think, allowed me to envision myself uh, becoming an astronaut. I guess the one thing that I am probably most proud of is, is probably the one thing that I didn't set off to try and achieve, and that was to become the chief of the astronaut office. And that, uh, I, I became the first female chief of the office, but I think it was actually more notable even that I was the first non-military chief of the astronaut office. And I think that uh, changed people's mindsets on what, what is acceptable um, and that what is possible. And so I think that was probably my uh, most proud. Uh, growing up in Iowa, I think, was, was really a key to developing a lot of my personality that made me successful. Uh, in particular, I think my parents taught me a uh, work ethic uh, that just doesn't quit. <laughs> well, the first thing is you have to find your passion. You need to be passionate about what you do, and if you do, then you're going to love your life. So find the passion. Second, work hard, because nobody's going to hand you anything. <laughs> And third, and I think probably most important, uh, is to live a little bit outside your comfort zone. Um, I, I think it's always easy to do the things that you know you can do, and I think it's important to challenge yourself to try new things. Even if you don't succeed, you're going to learn from it, it's going to make you better on your next step. I think the most important thing is inspiring other women to do what they want to do and to do the best that they can do and to say, really, anything's really possible, so think about it. Well, I think that once a woman has a particular position, they're in line to bring other women on board and part of the operation. So um, even if you're the first or the second woman in the room, I think it's critical that then you are in the room and you can make a difference by hiring more women. Well, it was, it, it was quite interesting because the first piece of mail we received, I received, was from the Attorney General of the State of Iowa. And uh, he, he sent us a letter and it said, Dear lady and gentlemen. So I thought two things. I'm in the room, but hey, we need more women with me. Well, in some ways, it hasn't changed much, uh, particularly in the corporate world. 
uh, but in a lot of different ways, particularly with the new generation, there's much more of a sense that women should be helping other women, that it's okay to do that. And that really wasn't thought to be okay, um, say, 50 years ago.